Thanks everyone. It's fantastic to see such a great turnout. I really appreciate it. What I want to talk with you about this morning is how you might understand how resilient is your organisation. Have a think for a minute. Would your organisation get through major adversity? How about your key supplier? Do you understand how resilient your key suppliers are? Developing tools that organisations can use to understand their level of resilience is a critical requirement for getting organisations to start proactively managing their resilience. And this is why it's important. Think of this question. Within a five year period, what percentage of global 1,000 organisations do you think experienced a 30% drop in their share price over just the course of a week? So that means they had a major crisis that plummeted their share value by a third. The answer? 40%. Crises are not rare, crises are not unusual. And organisations need to start realising that resilience is a strategic capability. The good news about that previous statistic is that those organisations that managed their crises well came out of their crisis with a higher share price than they went into it. Crises aren't all about downside. There is also opportunity to demonstrate core management competence through crises. So the challenge for us over the past 10 years as a research team has been to develop leading indicators of resilience. We want to be able to look at an organisation during peacetime when the sun's shining, the seas are calm, and try to be able to predict how that organisation might perform when it is put in times of adversity. So the search is on for leading indicators. And over the past 10 years, we've identified 13 leading indicators of an organisation's resilience. They are an organisation's leadership, its situation awareness, its innovation and creativity, its staff engagement and its decision making, all grouped under a broad attribute called leadership and culture. An organisation's effective partnerships, its internal resources, how well it leverages knowledge, and whether it breaks silos, all grouped under an organisation's networks and the networks within which that organisation operates. We also look at an organisation's unity of purpose, its planning strategies, whether it has a proactive posture and whether it actively stress tests its plans, all grouped under the broad attribute of its change readiness. Using these 13 indicators, we've developed a tool called the Resilience Benchmark Tool. And this tool enables organisations to understand how they sit against each of those 13 leading indicators of resilience. So the way that we end up using the Resilience Benchmark Tool is a senior manager from an organisation will initiate the Resilience Benchmark Survey and they will complete a series of questions. It takes about sort of 45 minutes for the senior manager to answer these questions about the organisations. They're resilience related questions, but they're also questions about day to day business performance metrics whether the organisation does staff surveys, how they've performed in those, what its finances are like, etc. That senior manager then gets sent an email link which they forward on to either all staff or a selection or a cross section of their staff to complete. And the, the all staff version of the Resilience Benchmark tool is a survey that takes about 20 minutes for staff to complete. And what we're doing through that survey, is we're capturing and collating perspectives from right across the organisation about how the organisation really operates. Not how the chief executive or the senior management team think the organisation operates, but what its views are from throughout the organisation of what's really going on. Once we've got sufficient number of responses, the senior manager can close the survey and the tool generates an automated results report which basically does all of the analysis and gives the organisation a profile of what its resilience qualities are like, which resilience indicators it's strong on, which ones it's weak on and general ideas in terms of how it could go about trying to improve its resilience. Why benchmark? Well, there's four key reasons to benchmark an organisation's resilience. The first one is to know thyself. 
unless your organisation has a self-awareness of what its strengths and its weaknesses are, then there's not going to be um, much traction in actually improving its resilience. Once you've got that information, you can start comparing and contrasting. How does one department look versus another? Why is this one good and this one not? Can we start getting some learning and sharing within the organisation about how to improve resilience? Can we look, look to some of our strategic partners and see what their resilience profile looks like? Can we start seeing how they've got so good in one resilience indicator and see if we can borrow and steal their ideas to improve our own resilience? Starting to get this dynamic learning environment around resilience. But it's also about tracking your resilience over time. Resilience is not a static quality. It ebbs and flows like a tide. As your business goes through natural business processes, it will get stronger in some indicators and it will get weaker in others. So it's about monitoring what's happening to your organization's resilience over time, but also tracking the effectiveness of any resilience initiatives that you've put in place. It's all about starting to create that business case for an organization to invest in its resilience. And just an example of how the resilience benchmark tool can be used is a study that we undertook with Sydney Water, which benchmarked the resilience of five different water companies within Australia. The way the resilience benchmark tool was used is that we used it to actually create a resilience profile for each organisation, but we also coupled that with contextual interviews to build up a really rich picture of the history, the legacy, and where those organisations were tracking in terms of their resilience. Now, there was no one organisation that was best in breed across every indicator. Each organisation had their strengths and their weaknesses, and a lot of it came down to where that organisation had been, the type of community that it was operating in, that told you something about their resilience qualities. But what we were able to do with these five organisations was then to start looking and saying, well, if this company's really good at this and they're operating in the same sector as you, what are they doing that's so good? Can you start going and talking to them and explore that and see if they've got some ideas that you can start leveraging? Just one simple example of a learning that came across is in the water sector, they're actually very good at managing operational crises. The water main breaks, that's their bread and butter. It's almost not a crisis for them because it's their day-to-day -day that they're actually dealing with. And to deal with those day-to-day -day type emergencies, they have a very good one-in, all-in culture. When the water pipe breaks, everyone pitches in to get the, to get the water back on. Now let's see if we can take some of those resilient strengths and translate them into a business as usual operating environment. How can we get an all-in, one-in ethos during business as usual? We can start getting some real business performance benefits if we can start getting that. So the resilience benchmark tool is available now, it's been used within several organisations. If you think that you would like to have your organisation understand its level of resilience, please get in touch with the Resilient Organisations team and we can talk with you about which of the tools is going to be of most value to you. But I guess I just want to leave you with this thought that resilience really is too important and imperative to ignore. It is a strategic capability for your organisation Crises are not rare, they're not unusual, and they're likely to become more frequent. And if your organisation can position itself to the point where it can manage crises better than any other organisation out there, then you'll be one of the leading organisations in the coming decades. Thank you.